Okay. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 385. Uh, each week um, we meet here to uh, review and uh, uh, answer some of the questions or all of the questions uh, asked on the uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google top contributor um, in the AdSense community, and he's based in London, uh, in Wimbledon in London. Um, he, uh, yeah, about 100 miles south of uh, Tim Kappa, who's based in Corby. Uh, he's uh, about 100 k's north of Mel. Uh, sorry, miles north of uh, uh, London. <laughs> Tim, uh, <laughs> he's shaking his head. <laughs> Tim, CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. Uh, he um, he's um, uh, also a Google uh, product expert on the Google My Business uh, community. All right, we have, um, I think, about uh, 10 questions tonight. Um, are we showing up on the screen, Tim? No? Okay. No, you're off for me. Oh, good. All right. Um, our first question... Um, <laughs> Our first question tonight is uh, uh, what are the best free uh, SEO tools to have? Well, it all depends what you want to really do, but uh, your free one is obviously Webmaster Tools, different ones that I use, you know, like, uh, I, hey, there's also Lighthouse, you know, um, I use company information because I'm on maps a lot, uh, GS location changer. There's, there's tons of different ones, uh, especially extensions now, that will do different things depending on what you want. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's loads. Depends what you do or what you specialize in or what you look at on a daily basis. Yeah, well, look, before we go any further, I, I think I'm omitted to um, uh, introduce my cat. Did I? I? Did I? Did I? Did I do it or not? I can't remember. You skipped. <gasps> I'm going to say I didn't. Jesus, uh, what? Is founder and president uh, at the Bay Area <laughs> Search dot org. Um, he's on the uh, east west coast, I should say, the west coast of uh, the USA, not too far from Silicon Valley. Um, former SEO manager at become.com. Why have you got that listed? Oh, former senior SEO manager at become.com. Um, senior manager, online marketing and analytics at Bolson Brands. Senior SEO manager at Zazzle. Former head of SEO at Zendesk. Anyway, um, getting back to it, we've, we've um, guessed that um, um, Webmaster Tools are, are a good free tool. What other ones do we have? Um, link Redirect Trace, or one of the link research tools is good for just kind of seeing the uh, redirects and any canonicals and indexations and crawl blocks. That's another one that's a free Chrome plugin. Um, you've already mentioned uh, Search Console. Um, gosh, a couple of generally other good tools. You can have some, um, what else would I would go? You know, any kind of screenshotting tool. It, yeah, it's not directly SEO, but for kind of audits and quick little findings, I always enjoyed personally uh, awesome screenshot as a as a plugin. I know others, um, you know, it kind of just as a free tool in that area is always a good one. Um, so those are some like 
quick ones I would think off the top of my head. There's still also a variety of free trial tools that you can use. Um, and some of the older classics that you can download are, are still sufficient if you're looking at something like Xenu. Um, some of those in the past, as well as like uh, web free kind of tool usage on websites. So um, HTTP status.io for kind of checking manually uh, a set of redirects to um, yeah, uh, 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 schema tester tools. Uh, the, you know, these are fairly good as well as just general uh, web page tools, loading tools as well. Yeah, and I will add um, accessibility tools to the list so that you can simulate what the site might look to someone with um, color blindness, for example, and other tools that will give you a score about certain things, whether your pages are um, compliant, which might be necessary in which might be a legal necessity in some places. So it would help you to see that. Uh, there are many um, good tools around with that, which you can add to your browser. Excellent. Th thank you. All right. Uh, let's um, move on um, to the next. We're going to find my mouse. Um, Number two on our list uh, is um, from Michael Martinez. Now, he's helped so many people. Um, hopefully, we can help um, him. Um, and uh, it's titled Upgrade Word WordPress at Your Own Risk. He said, is there anything can, that can be done about the problems caused by WordPress 5.5? For some good news, see my comment below, but I'd like to know how people handle the rare disastrous upgrade for their content management system that just tanks everything. Um, please share your experiences. Um, well, by the time I saw the issues <laughs> of with, with it, um wordpress has rolled out a fix <laughs> so so yeah i i i hadn't seen anything or experienced anything with it so unfortunately yeah, I, yeah. yeah it, it um well for for mine and, and um, michael uh um, is a, is a web host for a great many sites, and uh, um, he, he would he would know this already. But um, for my part, um, I put I put off um, any upgrade um, as long as possible. Let let somebody else solve the problems. Um, and uh, what was the issue with it? Do we know what like what what was doing? Normally, normally, what they, they what happens is um, there there'll be a function that's deprecated, um, and um, uh, whenever the uh, CMS tries to call it, um, it ha has a fatal error. That's normally what you know what uh, what happens. I oh, should um, they depreciate support for jQuery. Which broke fifty thousand sites, and then uh, there was an issue with how the themes, certain themes, handle pagination. Wow. Okay, so it's yeah, no. Luckily, none of my clients have decided to. No, yeah, so I never. But I think I read that they had fixed uh, something, so. Okay. All right, let's um, move Let on. Just to check that fixes. What's that, Tim? I want to check if WordPress fixed it. I just, I'm sure I read they did. Uh, 
Oh, hilarious. I, I just searched WordPress fixes for 5.5 to think and see if WordPress fixes it. <laughs> the first thing I see is the WordPress forum going, downgrade it to 5.4 now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, they did. They fixed it. Five bug fixes, yeah. Yeah, they did. <laughs> All right, uh, rolling on. Uh, uh, um, let's have a look at number three. From Nathan Nikolai Guidi, um, with and without dub, dub, dub. He said, creating links, should I use one URL or is there no difference between it's double TPS, uh, full colon, slash, slash, mywebsite.com. And it's double TPS, full colon, slash, slash, www.mywebsite.com. Well, it's a big difference. Uh, it's totally different. Uh, not the same. I think the, the pride in this, I like to use um, uh, the root the root domain. Um, sorry, I interrupted somebody there. Who was that? No, I mean, I, I, there's not a fundamental difference. I mean, you just have to think about tracking issues. So um, I've run into situations where, like, tools have a tough time. It's, it's so stupid, but, like, tools have a tough time knowing when you want to just see dub 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 versus dub dub so what that means is like if you're trying to find your let's say backlink data for the non-dub subdomain some of the tools can't recognize that you're just looking for that subdomain and will do for the whole domain so um there's no pure uh real you know difference between, but you should be at certain, sometimes tools have issues in recognizing that a non dub 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 can be its own subdomain. And so if you're trying to keep track of specific things through tools, you may run into issues that way if you have more than one subdomain. Thank you, Micah. Any more before we move on? By the way, I must thank uh, people like Michael Martinez. Uh, I see his answer there, and uh, he adds so much to uh, dumb SEO questions, uh, and uh, we are permanently grateful no matter what happens. All right, um, another one from Nathan. Uh, it's um, titled The Reason for a Website to be Crawled by the Desktop Crawler. Um, and uh, he asks, what would be the reason for a website to be crawled by the desktop crawler? I see Richard uh, Hearn, um, Estelle Wood uh, on our uh, um, online uh, recording. Uh, he, he, uh, we, miss, we miss you, Richard. Come back. Um, all right. Um, he, 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 Richard said that to see how it renders on the desktop, uh, Google uh, doesn't want to serve bad user experience to either desktop or mobile users. Uh, until we're 100% mobile usage, you can expect to be getting requests from a desktop user agent. Um, and... Uh, no comments from anyone? All right, thank you for that one, Richard. Oh. Okay. Erwin Allen asks a question. He said, my website is no longer on page one. He said, I have a, a website that was originally on page two, but after I checked again, it was getting down and then disappearing. What's the cause? Uh, there could be a million and one things. Uh, unfortunately, you know that. Looking at it, we can't even provide you with any any guess, um, and it literally would be an educated guess. Um, 
you know, there's fluctuations all the time. It depends on what the search query is. Um, like what's changed, you know, obviously was there, was there an update in the algo, like the search query, what changed on the front page to push you back off page two? Uh, were there new sites? Were there new pages? Uh, did for, you know, like what did, for example, like does that query now show like a local pack? Uh, it, 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 there's hundreds hundred hundreds of reasons of, of what shifted in how Google understands a search query and how they've brought things in now or dropped you down. So without like really looking at what the search query was and looking at your site, couldn't even make an, like an educated guess on that, right? Okay. Any others? Right, let's um, roll on to number six in our run list. We are ripping through these. Um, this one from Joshua Wells. It's titled Creating a Citation um, for a Multi-Location Business. Um, Joshua said, I asked a similar question to this before, but I, I guess I'm not quite clear on it. Uh, if I'm creating a citation for a multi-location business, um, brackets, multiple cities in the same state, um, and I have separate landing pages created for each city, is the website link and information that I put in that citation going to be um, the link to that location page or to the main page of the website and let the internal link to that location uh, page from the home page um, boost um, that um, location page. Okay, so firstly, just get boost out of your head. Okay. Start thinking about it logically. So you create a location page. So your location page is going to be um, I don't know, I'm just trying to think of it. So yeah, so I'm in Corby, right? Um, so, and that's in Northamptonshire. So you've got, you know, let's say you've got 10 locations in Northamptonshire, one of them being Corby. So it's your location page for Corby will obviously be the name. It will be the physical address for that location, your hours of operation, and that is your URL. So uh, uh, forward slash Northamptonshire, forward slash Corby. So that is the, the the URL for that location page. And yes, so any citation you build for that business at that address, right? That is the look the, the the page that you are going to link to in the citation. And each citation, obviously, is unique. It has its own unique NAP. Yes, your name is going to be, um, depending on how you set it up, it's going to be the exact same. So it'll be um, Bob's Plumbing. And then, you know, ideally you should, if you're creating a lot of these, and um, your GMB location. So if you set them up, it should ideally, ideally be Bob's Plumbing with the location name, Bob's Plumbing location name. They will have, um, so the name will literally be, pretty much be the same but obviously with a with a location differentiator you'll have your address for that the hours hours may not always be the same for these um uh, the telephone number won't be the same for these um unless you've got a head office one but if you're using court so you know etc but on your on the location page top quick top tip is to obviously provide your 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 main head office as well as the actual local direct telephone number and then your url is going to be to that because if you think about it um you know and and that's also going to be the url that's in your gmb listing because it makes sense for the user to click onto that one that they actually searched for that they found in results whether it be in the local pack or an organic that they view that they see the local number they see the address they see your hours of operation specifically for that. There's no point sending them to the home page. Then they've got to literally scroll through to find the location, to scroll, find down the location, find their location, and to find the information they want. So it should be to that location page. Thank you, 
Thank you, Tim. Oh, dear. Okay. Anybody else before we move on? Okay, this is number seven on our run list. It's from Andrew Marcia or Messia. Um, it's titled Various Sites That Have Weird Spam Like URLs. Andrew said, Hi, everyone. Uh, so I've been coming across various sites that have weird spam like URLs like this. Um, I won't try and read it out. If it can be seen on the uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. He said, notice that the uh, website continuumrecoverycenter.com um, is for uh, uh, an addiction recovery center in Phoenix, Arizona, yet it has that weird URL promoting a site for a dentist in Calgary uh, and uh, a kid's dentist in Miami. When I check both of these websites, I notice that they too have weird spam URLs with links to other non-related websites. When I check backlinks to all three websites, I notice that they get backlinks from websites with that same type of URL structure. It always has a three-digit number in the URL. I won't read it out. You can see it there on the web, on, on the group. Um, he said, I've come across this quite a few times now, and I'm wondering if anyone has any insight in on this. Is, is it some sort of black hat software that creates spam pages for backlink building purposes? And for your information, whatever it is, it's working. These sites have keyword ranking improvements and organic traffic improvements in a short period of time. <coughs> so the first thing that I just want to <coughs> say here is that, and, and, I don't know why people assume this and I don't know why, like I've had it so many times this week. Oh, look, these people, my competitors, they've got links from this and, and they're doing so well. It has to be this. No, it doesn't. There could be hundreds of other things, thousands of different things. And, you know, these, these other URLs from other sites, they, 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 they may or may not even be discounted by completely ignored by Google. So, you know, just, yeah, don't, don't look at these, these kind of things. And the other thing is, you know, if, if someone's created some weird ass, you know, EMD kind of shove everything into the URL, it, it, it doesn't mean you need to like, really, you don't need to do it. Okay. Um, let's go. I agree with all of that uh, too, by the way. Let's go to the next. Nathan Bradshaw asks um, question eight on our run list. Uh, he's, it's titled, please help me in finding the right keyword for a brand new website. Um, Nathan said, hi all. I've started working with a startup company who provides Online doctor appointment services. It means any person who is looking for a particular doctor relating related to his problem can schedule his meeting online near his area. Um, he, uh, my, my question for keyword research, all the market leaders are ranking on most of the keywords from short to long tail keywords. For example, um, Acne dermatologist near me. Can anyone please help me in finding the right keyword for a brand new website? Thanks. Yeah, look, I agree with just looking at what Michael said there first. Is you don't optimize for near me. Um, you don't have a page for like with near me in it. Um, if you're going to you know, if you're going to have a location page for this guy, you know, on, on, on or if it's just a single website for this dermatologist uh, on there, um, you know, uh, about or contact us page, you're going to have where you are, you possibly provide directions. And in that, you naturally include sort of 
near, you know, the nearest parking, nearest parking space to this is here, uh, nearest subway is here, nearest, uh, you know, ne nearest pay and display car park is here. So it, it slightly includes it, but, you know, essentially you don't really have to optimize for it. Optimizing your GMB and stuff like this is going to start including those, those, those queries. Um, but I, I, like I, I, <clears throat> finding the right keyword for the new website, like, is this site not built yet? Um, and also you're looking for broader, like primary care, New York, best photo. Is this, so this, this isn't actually a person's, uh, a single business. What, what if, is this like a directory of some sort? The lead generator maybe, Tim? Yeah, because it's like, you know, like, for example, primary care and foot doctor, two different, two different bloody things. Um, so, yeah. Um, so in, in that situation, you know, the first thing you're going to, uh, well, Well, I suppose you can do you can do the same shit like TripAdvisor does, really. Essentially, <coughs> is you can take your primary cares, and you're obviously a primary care provider, and then it's obviously New York. So when people click on primary care providers in New York, you're going to have all your list of primary care providers. Then you can literally go and create tags uh, or whatever, depending on what you're building it on, which would be visible. Then you would create bullshit tags like best primary care provider in New York and essentially have all them fuckers again. Then you would create another tag with uh, primary care providers in near Yonkers, New York, you know, and then you would create one with just on, 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 on their locations and the ones just in those locations would appear. And then, you know, you would have, um, you know, you could, and then, then you could, yeah, you can do all sorts of different things uh, with that essentially, but stuff's going to be thin. You, that site's really, really going to be thin. Um, so I, I would really look at how you manage that. Um, the other flip side, what you could do is then you could create, you know, you could start getting a little bit more things like you could split them out also into, um, primary care providers in New York with five-star rating. And then you check all of the guys and you see what their ratings are and the ones with five stars, you put them into there. So that's another query. Um, but, you know, just bear in mind that a lot of these things are going to be fairly thin, uh, these pages. Um, and, of course, you need to make sure that you, you are displaying that kind of stuff for them. So, you know, you can mark it up and you can try and make it slightly different, uh, put a little bit of extra content on there. Uh, then you can do things like top three primary care uh, providers in New York um, and then create, you could even then go and, you know, think about it. You could then go and create, like, depending on what the startup is, you know, you could create a logo type little award recognition thing, kind of shit that TripAdvisor does. And that can be presented to them. You, you know, it depends what kind of level you want to take us to. You could have a freaking award ceremony every year. You could send them a little award thing and then they could even, um, uh, you know, display it on their Facebook and stuff. Look, we've got a little award. Um, so, yeah, look, it literally is down to your imagination and what you want to, what you want to provide and create. Um, and I'm assuming that this is some kind of directory or lead gen thing. So I know you say online booking, but it's essentially going to be a lead gen, like, um, and, and, and directory kind of thing where they can, you know, you're going to list them. Um, so yeah, I would start thinking of that in that direction of situation. I would, you, I would sit down, look at what kind of details you have on them and what, how those can be split out into queries and pages. 
So a query is your page. Um, uh, so I would sit down. And even if you look in at a few other things and go, ah, oh, you know what, we could target this and this, but we still require that. We'll add it, add that into the information that you require for the for their for their um, page, you know, and start building it out. Um, you can also quite easily do it if you think about hotels, where hotels, for example, have <laughs> hotels, for example, have. Um, uh, uh, like uh, services, attributes, Wi-Fi, uh, <laughs> Wi-Fi, um, like what, what What would be um, Wi-Fi, near parking, uh, all this kind of stuff, and you could actually build that out and you could actually include that into your structured data. But, of course, that can also be split out into tagged or queried pages. So, like, the end is limitless unless, you know, it's based on what information you have. And then you can build it out, you can request more info and start building these things up for the practitioners or businesses. And then from there, you can start creating tagged, you know, kind of query query pages or not even just category, you know. Um, so those are my thoughts on how you could go about it and expand it. Thank you, Tim. Uh, any other contributions to this one? Okay, let's move on to the next. This one from Stephanie Solheim. Um, it's question nine on our run list, targeting each key city in my geographic area. Um, <clears throat> it goes on uh, duplicate content question. I'm working on a website with one type of local service. The owner wanted a, a handful of pages targeting each key city in his geographic area. These city pages use the same model as the home page, but do have uh, the content rewarded, reworded, uh, as well as uh, unique pictures and uh, some city-specific information. After running the website um, through SiteLiner, um, the owner decided that the uh, uh, content um, oh, what have I done wrong here? Um, the content scored too high. Goodness me. Uh, but yeah, for, for duplicate shit. Yeah, it's an acceptable look, score. Go ahead, Tim. Look, this is, look, Stephanie, I mean, so firstly, my question is, it's a local service and you're targeting all these cities. The first question is, do you actually service those cities? Okay. Now it's very simple to make, you know, um, uh, to, to to make it to make these pages um, pretty much unique. Your introduction to the business for that location is always going to be, you know, the first couple of paragraphs are always going to be pretty similar. But there's ways of making it unique, you know. So <clears throat> surely you you've said it's a local service. So surely it's not one guy traveling two hundred miles in a freaking day to go and wash windows in another city. Okay, so you probably have teams, different teams. So each city, you can you can actually put meet the team that services, you know, whatever that city is. And it will be John, Bob, and Dave, and, <clears throat> you know, a little quick bio on them. Local, born, and bred, know the city, blah, 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 back of their hand, whatever. Uh, also think, so uh, you haven't said what the local service is, but let's say, um, I don't know, let's say it's, Bro, uh, I don't know, freaking cleaning wheelie bins. You know, what days are the collections in those particular areas? And, like, what days are the best days that you, you would, you know, mention it defined by the city? Like, I don't know, do you – there's ways of, of making it unique and, and differentiating it, but you, you, you've just got – stop being stuck in your way. Like, literally look at it. Look at the city – talk to the business, understand what they do and how it does, and then you can differentiate it. Um, so, um, yeah, 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 totally different. Like, obviously it depends. On, I mean, if I knew what the flipping service was, I could give you a bit more kind of just off the top of my head. But Colleen in here mentions like a roofer. So, yeah, roofer's great, you know. So, you know, city, cities are planning laws. They have aesthetics. 
you you know what you abide by like um what is the typical you know what, what is typically used in there um plumbers you can split it up is that a hard water area a soft water area different cities um uh, do they have different regulations in terms of of, of, of the plumbing or electric, electrical? I mean, you haven't said what your service is. So there's a lot of ways where you can kind of switch it up and differentiate it. Um, uh, yeah, and, and especially with staff. Um, yeah, uh, from what I've gathered, you actually are only one business and you're willing to travel to all these different areas. I don't know if you've got people in the area like... Um, the particular days you would service that city because let's face it like you haven't said so you couldn't be in one city on a, on a wednesday and then the same wednesday you you know in a different city so do you have a rotation a, a rota yeah you know you could there's all sorts of different ways of of of, of making those pages unique thank you tim all right, let's call that a wrap for uh, Stephanie. And um, let's go uh, to the next. Oops, no, it's that's that time again. It's thank you for watching time. Before we go, I must thank um, all of the people that, like Brenda Mission and Michael Martinez, the people that answer questions uh, throughout the week. And Tim Capper, I see you. Uh, there more and more, uh, and that's much appreciated. Um, and uh, of course, uh, Micah and, and uh, Masataki, uh, your contribution uh, once uh, every week um, um, is um, so much appreciated. It makes dumb SEO questions such a, a valuable resource. We'll be back. Uh, at the same time uh, next week um, uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, but if nobody else has any more to say, it's time for us to go. Yeah.